Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Phasers, a highly illogical Woo. podcast. Woo! Episode two. Yes. Episode two. We made it through our inaugural episode, and here we are again. They said we shouldn't do it again. They said, you know, <laughs> one was enough. You proved it. You proved it could be done. You don't have to overdo it. But you know what? We're, we're here for the long haul. We are. We've got two seasons to go before season three starts, and then we've got an extra season, and then. Probably more bonus content. More bonus content. Because we have nothing better to do. We could talk about Picard. We oh, could talk yes. about short tracks. I don't want to get too crazy with the animated thing we talked about earlier this week. All right. Listen, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. The star date is 12717.6. And today we will be discussing Star Trek Discovery, Season 1, Episode 2. Battle at the Binary Stars. I love it. So, Aki, yeah. should we start with our rundown? I think we should run it down. It's time to run it down. Can you run it down for me? What just happened? Can you run it down for me? Your dancing is so full of joy that I don't even know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Why should you do that? I just, do you know what? I think... If I could have you make a soundtrack of my life, <laughs> I could die happy. You, uh, you'd just be bopping from place to place. I would. <laughs> I would. That's actually mean. very. It's. I'm flattered. Okay, let's run this thing down. So this is episode two. It is really these two episodes came out the same day. They're really like you know premiere mm-hmm. the the two hour premiere episode. So we pick up right where we left off. Uh, Michael has tried to like. Do a Vulcan death pinch on Captain Georgiou, and uh, she goes out. She tries to fire on the one Klingon ship, but before she can get the thing to come off this mutiny, Georgiou wakes up and is holding a phaser, and then she says, belay that order, and then a bunch of ships come out of warp, and it's Klingon ships. And that's where we left off last episode. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go watch episode one. You can just go back, listen to our episode, and then come back to this one. That's all you need to do. Yeah. You could listen to our first episode. You don't even need to watch the show. We're, we're, our, mm-hmm. our descriptions are so colorful. Well, we start, we thought we were going to start in media res, in the middle of the action. But in fact, we begin with a flashback. Ooh, did you say yeah. a flashback? Mm. And two strangers are teleported, are teleported, are transported onto the Shenzhou. Wow, this is... Okay, it's the next gen thing. I need to get the other one. It'd be, yeah. This is pretty good. Maybe we should just narrate the episode because we're doing a pretty good job. Um, <laughs> get some actors. <laughs> and it's uh, Sarek and a young Michael Burnham with the perfect Vulcan haircut. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like, like Beatles style. With the, yeah, assimilated like 100%. So a different, you know, Michael mm. than we saw who was young and frustrated. And... Uh, they're meeting Captain Georgiou for the first time. And Georgiou is like, hey, I'm a human. Boop, boop, boop. You know, doing the cool. She's so charming. She's got all this charisma. And Michael's like, I am not impressed with your um, human ways. And even Sarek at, at some point in this is like, uh, cool it. Be <laughs> be chill, Michael. Jeez. Yeah. As he's leaving, he's like, behave. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> try to make friends. It feels like he's dropping her off at camp. It is. He's like, I got to bring my daughter in. And he's like, and I got to, she comes in hot. So I better go in with her and be like, hey, this is Michael. And she can be like a little Vulcan. I thought this is a good instance of Michael in full Vulcan. Vulcan? Did you say Vulcan? I Vulcan. And she's fully Vulcan. She is not impressed with Georgiou's quips and remarks. She doesn't like the aphorisms. She's barely interested in, like, talking to any humans. But they share a moment in the elevator, which is fantastic because, Michael's. you know, they they both sort of begin to insult each other. They're like, your arrogance is out of control. And she's like, your arrogance is out of control. And then she goes like, 
but I saw your record. And she's like, and I saw your record. And then they're like, and it's totally deserved. She's like, so is yours. Mutual respect. And then you're like, these best of friends, they're going to be friends forever. Cut to what's really going on. Uh, Michael has just tried to have a mutiny. She just like, you know, knocked out Captain Georgiou. And uh, 24 ships have arrived. We find out 24 Klingon ships. And Michael, you know, still with a gun being pointed at her, is still trying to make the case that they they need to have, they need to take an aggressive stance against these Klingons. But now there's 24 ships, there's 24 houses. Someone over there is trying to unite the 24 houses of the Klingon Empire. Mm-hmm. And as much as Georgie wants to hear that, she also has, you know, reads Michael the Riot Act. She says, listen, you, like, attacked a senior officer. You tried to commandeer the ship. You tried to go to mutiny. You are relieved of duty. Yep. And we're throwing you in the brig. And she's like, even if you're right, you still did it the wrong way. Yeah. Even, even if you're right, you did it wrong. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I think that's, it's hard. Not only is it hard on Michael, but I realize this time it's pretty hard on Georgia, who I think... The relationship goes both ways. If Michael views Georgia as a mentor, and in fact, in one quote, I saw um, the actress, Sonequa. Martin Green? Martin Green. I was going to say modern Green said that in that moment, well, I don't want to spoil it later on in the episode. So anyway, never mind. But Georgia is also upset that Michael has so disappointed her. Uh, and then we smash cut to the Klingons. We're on the Klingon ship. And Klingons are like, doing the thing where you like you like it's a little star warsy the way the klingons do it it's just like a green avatar of the captains standing there and there's these 24 klingon captains and they're like you interrupted my my mission you interrupted my cruise blah 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 and they're yelling at volk who's standing there who's greeting them like where is the kubma blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then of course as they as they that's what they were like. They were just very cranky. Uh, Takubmer comes out of nowhere and he's like, oh, hello, it's me, Takubma. Oh, my ship, <laughs> my mission, my honor. Whatever happened to the honor of Klingons? Uh, and he is like, listen, we need to get together. We need to defeat the, the, the Federation because they don't want us to retain our individuality. Klingon Mahtajaj. Remain mm-hmm. Klingon. Yeah, I said it. It rolls off the tongue. I've been practicing it for weeks. Klingon mach kach ja ja. Is that it? Is that close? Well, there's no... There, yeah, that was very close. Mach ta jash. Mach ta jash. Mach ta Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. You, you nailed it. Thank you. I've had you say it enough times. I should really be getting it by now. Right. It won't be the last time. And uh, it won't be the last time in this episode. <laughs> Uh, the he tells the story of the, you know they're trying to blah 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 blah. You don't deserve, you know, you can't tell us what to do. And he says, "Oh yeah, when my father died, I took over the ship." And we have another flashback this time from the Klingon perspective. Mm. It's beautiful. This episode is full of flashbacks for the listeners. Uh, so it's like a young Takuma, and he's like taking over his father's ship, and their kids playing on it. And he says, "Get out of here! You won't mess up the honor." of this ship, and then the kids, like, beat the living snot out of Takuma. But he uses it to say, like, listen, I realized um, that if we don't band together, there's no way we can have honor. You're all here. If we really wish to have honor, if we really wish to have, you know, a Cleon society, we must join together. But then he, like, calls out this dude whose name is Cole, who I've totally forgot about, who I think is the, the mm. house that, like, kicked out Volk for being, uh, you know, different in appearance right wasn't that wasn't that sort of the subtext he's like yes they're like this one is a freak you have a freak in your house and he goes the only requirement to be in my house is klingon judge, right and uh, he says and i accept mm-hmm. anyone who who defends that even those who have been kicked out by other houses then cole's like i'm out of here i'm not staying but then a different klingon leader a lady says oh we'd like to hear more of what the kubma has to say uh which i thought was awesome yeah She's on the council, right? Yeah, this is the council. Can we just take a minute and just, you know, that when the council appears and there's this sort of like hologram of like all of them that just appear and Takuma's like looking up. Yeah. We've never kind of seen this 3D hologram in a sense. And it's not on a screen. It's not that we're not having these sort of on screen moments. They're like in front of you as holographic things. Exactly. It's cool. Very, yes. 
it's very cool. And then they're like, once once Cole leaves, they're like, so what's up? What's your plan, man? And he's like, listen, you got to listen to me. What I say is going to happen is going to happen. And then he, like, runs to the window. I love this Klingon ship because it has, like, windows and balconies somehow. Mm. It's so gothic and beautiful. Anyway, uh, and then out of nowhere, pew, 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 a billion Federation ships show up. And then uh, we go back to the Federation, and George is like, all right, we got to talk to these people and tell them that we're, you know, not going to have any business, you know. So she get, opens up comms. She says, listen up. we You have two options. You're in our space. You can either go home or you can fight us and then go home. And and but you should know that if you go home, then we can talk because we and then Takuma goes like, wait for it. Here comes their lie that they like to tell. And she goes, we come in peace. And he's like, you see. And then the Klingons are like, ah, we hate peace. I love that moment where like Georgia is talking and he goes, here it comes. Yeah, it's so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like disdain, sarcasm. It's brilliant. so. Yeah, he's like, oh, he, yep, here they are. Oh, let me guess. We come in peace. Um, and then they fire on the the Shenju, and thus begins the battle at the binary stars. The smash cut. The epic, the epic battle. The epic battle. But before the battle begins, we find Burnham in her uh, cell, and she's having a flashback. Was it? Yeah, it was definitely a flashback. It wasn't her flashback, but uh, we really are seeing a flashback of Sarek. Um, at the Vulcan, uh, ha, 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 I wrote this down, Learning Center. The Vulcan Learning Center, and he sees Michael. He says, Michael, you must wake up, Michael, Michael. And then he puts his hands, you know, does the whole this thing, and he's like, my thoughts to your thoughts, your mind to my mind, and does like a mind meld. And then Michael <laughs> wakes up in the um, in the brig. And that was cool. Anyway, there, uh, as this is happening, the ship is being, all the Federation ships are getting completely fired upon. And the Klingon ships, and there's like crazy wars happening. Because um, it looks like and, Michael slept through this battle when we, like, she comes to and we're like, did you sleep through that? Well, yeah, that was weird. Because hmm. then does the end, so at, on, this, on the bridge at the same time, there's like the whole, the first huge thing, and Ensign, uh, who we shall recognize later, Connor, you know, gets all blown up and the and they can't, they're like, hey, can you get to the, to, you know, the medical area, sick bay? And he goes, yeah, I can do it. But then he goes to see Michael. So she must have slept through the first salvo of like explosions or something. Why was she unconscious? That doesn't make sense. Because then there's another. That part lost me because she has this sort of moment and, blah, 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 and then she wakes up from the flashback. And then there's sort of, the, you know, the, all this epic battle stuff is going on. And you're like, did she sleep through that? Well, that, no, that's later. That's another, fl- so so many flashbacks. And oh, that's stuff. the other yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote this down because I knew I was going to get confused. But she definitely woke up in the middle of a battle. There was a flashback, but I don't know if it was her flashback. So maybe she was awake. It wasn't It wasn't her flashback. It was just a flashback. The one with Sarek right. doing the mind meld. Because maybe she's just sitting there. No, there was definitely a moment where she was like. That's later. That's later. That's okay. after. okay. It's great. It's complex. Am I messing up your rundown? No, not at all. I I have written (laughs) down here, but it's very confusing because every other one says flashback. (laughs) Uh, uh, I did read. I googled. um, Did you? Wait, you have that ready? You can Google that. I googled that they put a lot of flashbacks in this episode because they wanted the the first two episodes to have a lot of the backstory that we would need so they wouldn't have to do flashbacks in the main body of the of the season. Oh. So I think that's why we get, to, we get front-loaded with so many flashbacks here. At that point, Ensign Connor comes in and he's like, why are we fighting? And I'm all jacked up and you should be on the bridge. And she says, I committed a, a mutiny. I can't possibly be on the bridge. And that's, I think, when the big, big attack happens. He gets sucked out. Ensign Redshirt. Ensign Redshirt gets sucked out. He gone. He did. And she, I think the <laughs> ship gets rocked and he gets thrown, she gets thrown against the wall, Michael. Yep. And that's when she passes out. Okay, that must be it. That's then. when she loses consciousness. Uh, and there's, and we get back to the ship and we find out this, uh, to the bridge and they're like, there's a major hull breach. Uh, <clears throat> and then we go back to Michael, who's like in like a weird ethereal plane of uh, etherealness. And she's 
<laughs> looks up and she's talking to Sarek and she's like, a mind meld, mm. hundreds of or thousands of light years apart. How is this possible? And then he says, well, remember that flashback from earlier <laughs> that we had to put in place? You should know that when we mind melded, you were young, you hold some of my katra, is the word he is, katra, uh, to, and now it is within you. So for us, we are able to have a mind meld at a, this great a distance. And he says he came because he sensed Michael's despair, but he encourages her. In a way, he's like very complimentary and she's freaked out by it because she's like, you're never complimentary of me. And he says like, perhaps that is where I failed you. Mm. Single Vulcan tear at that moment. But it was such a moment of just like, because she's like, why, why are you doing this? And she's like, you're being very nice to me. And he's, and it's sort of this sort of Vulcan moment of, you got this. Yeah. He's like, come on. I, I'm disappointed that you're not doing better because I know you can. Mm-hmm. You Vulcan. You, you sure Vulcan can. Moment. I Vulcan. That's right. That's right. So Michael is uh, sent forth and, and he tells her, like, you gotta do something. Uh, you got to save the people who need you. And then we find that we switch back to the Shenzhou, which is now dead in the water. It's like everything's messed up. Shields are jacked. They got hit and like aft. And they're, they're now floating. they're floating into the like debris field that surrounds the binary star system. And they're like brace for impact. This ship is about to get j- 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 jacked up. And then out of nowhere, right at the last minute, plum, tractor beam. Who has shown up? But the flagship of the fleet, not well, not the flagship, because we all know the flagship's the Enterprise, but hmm. uh, the flagship uh, of this uh, this fleet for this battle that has the Admiral on it. And the Admiral shows up and he pulls them out of the debris field. And he's like, he, he, this was actually perfect because he comes in so admirably and like, big man on campus, spready, blah, 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 which I also, I find it a little annoying. I mean, it was it was a basic toxic white male. He shows up late to the fight. Yeah, <laughs> everything has gone absolutely to shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, what's going on here?" And 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 <laughs> you know, they're like, "Yeah." And he dresses her. He dresses Georgia down. Yeah, he's like, "What the what the hell? What did you do?" She's like, we tried to talk and they started shooting. And he goes, all right, fun. And then he's like giving commands on his ship. But again, he's, they're doing the projection thing. So he's like on their, mm-hmm. their bridge, but he's talking, he's like, open a channel. And he goes, let's set it up. This is Admiral, blah, 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 blah. And I'm here to tell you that I represent all of the Federation. I speak for the whole Federation. We are ready to engage in a ceasefire and to, to negotiate. He's like, I can bring you to the table. I'm Admiral who gives. Uh, his name is, his name is, uh, is I think it's Brett Anderson. It's Brett it sounds about right. Anderson. Yeah, Brett. It's, oh, wow. Might as well be called I know, Chad. I was going to say, he could have a backwards baseball cap on. Um, <laughs> so, man, it's me, Admiral Brett. <laughs> and and <laughs> I can't get that out of my head. But uh, so much to stay. <laughs> I just, I thought it was well done because I immediately was like, Ugh, why is he showing up like this? And so Takuma's like, oh, okay, um, I would love to talk to you. We'd love to engage in a ceasefire. We were just waiting for someone of worth to show up. We would happily begin discussions with you. And then Brett's like, that's red. And he's like hiking up his pants, sort of. And then Takuma says to Volk on the side, he's like, something like, never say that I cannot make my ships invisible or something like that. Anyway, Brett's all like, well, but, uh, all right, here, let's see what's happening. Give me, and then he's like, oh. Uh, hey, I did it. Cool. Like, I made beats with the Klingons. Yeah. And then the ship gets all shook up, and he's like, what the hell's going on here? Boo, 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 boo. Trying to, uh, you know, I don't know, bluster his way out of the situation. And that is when the Klingon ship, the Sword of Kalos, reveals itself as, yes, like a knife through butter cuts through mm. their ship. Uh, yeah. And it, killing everyone presumably on board it's like slow and and the ship is actually shaped like a sword so it's just like Mm. it's just cleaving through this saucer section of this ship it was amazing and beautiful and also terrifying because initially it's cloaked and then you're like whoa what's going on and then it uncloaks and you're like it's a giant ship it's a blade it's a ship that is a blade it's kind of like the you know like the back end of the titanic but the, the front the front, exactly. Yes, it's like oh, it's like for cut, like an ice cutter 
sort of yep. ship looks like, but it's, there's no ice. In, well, what am I saying? Oh, no, it's the, the front end. Yes. Like, but at the bottom. Yeah, right, right. The, that, that part that, yes. We Being know all ship about ships. I don't know what mm-hmm. that's called. Yeah, to port, to starboard. The aft. It's aft. No, I, I think aft is the back. Is it? What's mm-hmm. forward? I think it's four deck, four, right? Maybe, yeah, aft, that's probably about back. right. Because aft, after, aft probably relates to afterwards. Yes. Oh, from the Latin, it's not. From I'm the Latin, it's not. Okay. <laughs> So much culture. We have so much culture. Hang on, listener. <laughs> so where were we before I interrupted you? The Klingon ship was like a sword, like a knife through butter into the uh, the Europa. Mm-hmm. As the called. Europa, thank you. Europa. I thought I wrote that down, but I didn't. I remember yes. some some random facts. You're all you're I on supplement it. you. Between the two of us, we got this thing covered. <laughs> yes, like a, the ship, like a knife through butter. So the Klingons through the Federation. You know, this is like a a dark foreshadowing of the idea that the Klingons are just going to cut through all the, the Federation bullshit. They're like, yeah, let's do a ceasefire, baby. And then, like, actually split your ship in half. Uh, and so, anyway, those people are all dead. And the they do an antimatter explosion and both ships die. Yeah, because the go, Europa's like, well, yeah. yeah. And they're like, yeah. we're going to blow ourselves up and blow mm-hmm. you up in the process. Mm-hmm. And Saru's like, I'm seeing a, a deliberate anti- antimatter, antimatter thing exchange. Antimatter, antimatter. Oh, okay. So we go back to Michael now. And she's like, she's like, all right. She's got to convince the computer to let her out of jail. It was great. I loved that. This was one of my favorite scenes in it. This was a total Vulcan moment. I hate to. It was a Vulcan moment. She really is nailing Vulcan. I Vulcan. Yeah, the computer's like, she's like, let me out of here into safety because I'm about to die. The computer's like, nah, I can't engage the uh, ethical protocols. And Michael goes, oh, no? Oh, well, how long will I be in the thing? And how soon will my thing die? And then, like, what if you opened, would I be exposed to vacuum? And then the computer's like, yeah. And she's like, well, what if you opened up a smaller thing? She was like, you wouldn't be able to open the door. And then she's like, well, then ethically. You would need to do it. You would need to open the door for me. And the computer's like, bleep, 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 bleep. you're right. And Michael is then another badass moment for Michael Burnham, who, for the most part in this episode, is in jail, not doing much. Uh, but actually, do we have our potentially our first Michael moment? I'm sure we do. I would call it a Michael moment. Michael, Michael moment. Mm. Yeah, Beautiful. they are sumptuous, mm. like the vocals of that thing that someone did for us. Someone, yep. Um, yes. Someone, some bored someone who can do 15 overdubs of vocals. All right, so. Is that many anyway, I know, I know. We, want, oh yes, I think my favorite part of that thing, apart from, yeah, Michael's doing the whole thing is that then the computer goes, well, chances for survival are estimated at 43%. And Michael's like, I'll take it. Uh, just a badass moment. So Saru and Georgiou are trying, in the meantime, are trying to figure out a way to somehow strike back at the Klingons. And so Saru comes up with this brilliant plan to, they can't shoot torpedoes. Their their ship is dead in the water. But he's like, well, we can take a torpedo, put it on like a shuttlecraft that would look like it was part of the debris, and then fly there and then blow up the ship in, in like a targeted strike. And and he's like, I don't know who would do it. And George is like, I'll fly the ship over. Sort of a Trojan horse. Very Trojan horsey, but like, you know, a little kamikaze as well. But then Michael shows up and she looks great, by the way. But I just was like, I expected her to look like she had been in vacuum, but she looks completely composed. Yeah, because when she's flying through the vacuum, you like. Her face starts to go blue and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I was just thinking of the last episode when she's like all ripped up by radiation. But she just looked like, she's like, hey, what's up? It's me, Michael. Uh, she's like, you can't do that. And uh, maybe she's just that badass. I don't know. Uh, and so she is able to talk to Georgiou alone. And she says, like, listen, you can't kill this guy. Because if you kill him, he becomes a martyr. And that will allow the Klingons to truly bond together. Uh, he's made himself like a holy prophet. Who, yeah, as the battle is ending. And, and uh, I kind of skipped over this, but. Uh, Takuma tells everyone to go back to Konos and await him there uh, because they've defeated the the Federation people. And they go like, long live Takuma the Unforgettable. And then he says something like, I am 
Kayless Reborn, it gets like real weird because he was super cool before that. But then yeah. he gets like, suddenly he's like, yeah, I'm the Messiah. Was it just before that? And he said, you know, I'm going to pick up all of the dead bodies and then I'm going to embalm them myself. It was right after that. He's like, I'm the Messiah. And now he's like, I'm anointing the dead bodies of us soldiers. He does give a great speech, which I'll bring up later when he does the soldiers. Anyway, Michael and Georgiou are talking, and this is this I think is the crux Vulcan Vulcan moment because Georgiou is sort of saying, you know, I can't believe you did this. I thought I knew you. I thought you were ready for your own command. I can't believe how little I knew you. And Michael says, you know, I did it to protect you. I thought it was the best option. Um, you know, Georgiou says, I thought I could pick away at that shell the Vulcans had put around you. How foolish of me. How arrogant of me. And Michael says, I did what I had to do because it was the only way to save you and the crew and the Federation. And she says, "To this, to, was it logical or was it emotional? I don't know. I Vulcans. Mm. Yeah. We, this is a, a critical issue for Michael at this point. And, and I, thought, I think as listeners, as listeners, as watchers, mm. we also don't know how much of her decisions are are strong logic overpowering emotion or emotion overpowering logic, you know? She's sort of torn between these two things in a way that we haven't seen mm-hmm. Vulcans really have to do. Uh, so, <clears throat> in any case, that was a big moment for me. I felt like I really felt Michael. And then we get to the weird anointing of, oh, so the Klingons, the way they're picking up their soldiers is pretty awesome. They, like, send bunch of tiny yep. tractor beams down and just are pulling soldiers out of the out of the vacuum and like sucking them up and so they come up with it michael and georgia come up with an even doper plan and that plan is to uh put the photon torpedo warhead on one of like transport it onto one of the soldiers so that when it gets lifted up to the ship it explodes it knocks the head off of this bird of prey and then georgia and michael are suddenly like i don't know it's weird they're like Let's do this. Let's go get our prisoner. They decide they need to take him prisoner because that, that will give them a better bargaining chip against the Klingons. So they go over. They ride to the bridge, and they find it empty, and then they move around in it. They've got their phasers up, and they are attacked. Uh, Michael winds up having to fight Volk, which, yeah. Yeah, and it's like sort of captain to captain and sort of first officer, if you like, to first officer. Like, there's this sort of parallel that's going on. Mm-hmm, yeah. And also a little spoiler alert. Oh, did you say spoiler? Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. This is not the last time that Volk and Michael will be physically entangled. Um, <clears throat> Quite. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> they are fighting... And at one point, Michael is being choked, and then she's able to, like, half gouge out to Kumazai, like, really screws up his eye thing. And then uh, she gets the high ground, but she turns around just in time to see Georgiou get stabbed by Takuma. Yeah. Like, timing was like, just two seconds out. Woof. If she had just, like, two seconds earlier, she could have hit him with the old stunny stun. And seeing that, this is a total Vulcant moment to counterbalance everything else in the episode. I Vulcant. I think we watch her, like, turn the phaser from stun to, like, kill. She's like, absolutely not. You will not kill Georgiou and, and not die for it. And she shoots him with the, the kill level. Razor. Yep. And she gets him right in the back. She gets him right in the back and he's, who? And then Saru's, you know, worry, worried Saru's all like, oh, goodness gracious, help me, help me, help me. Uh, I can't hear the captain. Uh, what's going on there? And uh, Michael is sort of like, I need to get to the captain's body. She's dead, but there's more people coming. And she's running for the captain. And Saru's like, if you're in trouble and the captain's dead, then I have to zoom. I have to, I have to, I have to zoom you out right around <laughs> zoom. I have to beam you out right away. And she's like, ah. yeah, like right next to the captain. In any case, Michael comes back. Uh, Volk goes to Takuma and says, I will, you know, avenge you and carry your name on. Your name will be remembered forever. Michael is distraught, but 
um, that's sort of the end of the action of the Battle of the Binary Stars. And then oh, we see all the escape pods go off, flash cut, you know, to Michael standing in front of a mm-hmm. court martial tribunal. And they're like, hey, mutiny. And they're all like in the dark. It's very. It's so weird. Yeah. They're like, is there anything else you'd like to say in your defense? These faceless people. They're faceless. Mm-hmm. Admiral, the face miss Admiralty. And I think they're really just upset that Admiral Brett got jacked Brit. up. But, uh, you know, she's like, hey, I've always wanted to pursue the noble uh, situation that the Federation put before me. And she ends that speech with beautifully saying that dream is over and that she pleads guilty. And they say, you will be in prison for life. And here endeth the rundown. Set phases. To stats. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Phase stats. Here's what I got. I got one energize. Really? I thought we had a couple of those. I remember playing it twice. Well, we had <laughs> we had times where it happened, but we only had one like energize. Oh uh, yes, fair. Yeah, yeah. Fair. Um I had four flashbacks, which I'm still not sure about. And we had one red shirt death. Yeah. And speaking of that red red shirt death, I think it's only proper that we eulogize the other people who died in this episode. Uh, so many deaths. So many deaths. So many senseless deaths. Well, that is war. It is a senseless machine of death. Uh, we lost Captain Philippa Giorgio, played by Michelle Yao. Played wonderfully, don't forget, wonderfully. Played wonderfully by Michelle Yeoh. We lost to Kuvma, the spiritual leader of the Klingons, the uniter of the, the houses of the Klingons. And we lost Admiral Brett Anderson, who showed up late, died early. Their watch has ended. We salute them. <laughs> that was beautiful. I, <laughs> I realized... We are doing such a thing, but we did. Gets more fun every time. <laughs> it's a good balance to how like crappy it is when someone you like on the show dies. Uh, yeah, so that was uh, those were the stats I had. I don't know if you caught anything else that I missed. I didn't catch anything else actually. I think you had it all. So, is it time for quotable moments? Yes, Mrs. Potts. It is time for quotes. <laughs> it is definitely time for quotes, Miss Potts. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Potts. That's Mrs. Potts to you, young ma'am. Oh, excuse me. You're right. You're totally right. Yeah, it's Mrs. Potts and, and Chip. Her son Chip, her grandson Chip, her nephew. All right. Two quotes. The short the first one is short. I just really loved when Sarah said to Michael, you know, gather your strength, mm-hmm. find a way to help those who need you. And that was his, that was how he was like, you get up there and you fly through vacuum and you go do what you got to do. And then since this is the last time we really get to hear from this guy, Takuma gave one hell of a eulogy to all the dead soldiers. Are you doing it in English or in Klingon? Yeah, I'm going to do this 45. (laughs) No, I I (laughs) wish. Don't make me rue the day because then I'll practice it. And it goes a little something like this. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. A warrior who dies in his sleep is no more than flesh and bone. A warrior who perishes honorably in battle is blessed. A warrior's death brings pride for a life given in defense of our race and comfort that new life awaits in Stovokor. Join your vaunted comrades, brothers and sisters, for you are not alone and stand among the black fleet forever. Forever. I just thought that was dope. Forever. You stand among the Black Fleet forever. Beautiful. That- Stovacore, it sounds so um, Viking. It does. It's Well, it's very uh, Valhalla, but instead of like, ha, mm. ha, ha, it's like, oh, oh, oh which is more Klingon. <laughs> Valhalla always, I was always like, Valhalla is what these like crazy Viking warriors call their like warrior place. It sounds so, ha, 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 ha. But the Klingons are like, you're going to Stovacore. And maybe they did that that way deliberately. Maybe they're like, Valhalla, what? Let's, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Probably. Why not? So, Aki, I think it is time for my favorite part of the show. Yes. 
it's actually not my favorite. I think my favorite is the rundown because I get to play that that music. Next time on Set Phasers. You get to play the rundown music, but this is pretty good. Next time on Set Phasers, we will uh, talk about episode three in which we deal with the consequences of decisions made by Michael Burnham and the war that has broken out between the Klingons and the Federation and various other fallouts, uh, uh, personal, organizational, and otherwise. In an episode called Context is for Kings. Uh, if you've enjoyed uh, our show, thank you so much for checking us out. Uh, you can catch us every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live or as a podcast every Monday, wherever podcasts come from. Uh, and if you do like it, please subscribe. We are on Facebook and Instagram at Set Phasers Podcast. Feel free to follow us and join in the conversation of all things Trek. Yes. And if you want to support us on our continuing mission to discover what Discovery has in store for us, we'd only be delighted. You can patronize us, we can take it, by going to patreon.com slash setphasers. Well, Aki, until next time, I am Steph Manns. And I am Aki Vermees, and this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. With that, computer. End program. Mm-hmm.